Questo lo metto dritto oppure lo, lo sposto un pochino? Do you want to turn it a little bit no, or uh, just, just straight? Non perfetto. Non perfetto. Non perfetto. Deve essere imperfetto. 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 Va bene questo? Salvato su qui? Come sta? follow this sequence. Why not use the, uh, let's use the amber. Allora, la quello di ambra, il giallo, il giallino, la dietro fuori. Ah, sì. I didn't like the way it was going. It was getting a little chaotic. So I decided to pull it all out. And I had the raw materials all there. And um, try something that had a little bit more, um, let's say, painterly orderliness to it. You know.
first stage. Yes. It was a very experiential thing for me as well, you know. Um, but I, uh, lucky enough, um, I've done this enough that I, when I feel that something is not in my, totally in my control or doing something that I, I'm working against, uh, I can just have, you know, the guts to just pull it out and, and start it again. see it through and see if something would would start to okay I'm gonna now I'm gonna try salt make some magic you know with the you know and a good reason to work with these materials and I just wasn't seeing that happen so which is normal in my studio so I just simply take it apart and um, start over again When I was asked to do this um, commission, or this project, uh, I got the, uh, the best reproductions I could find, and uh, then I was able to analyze them by breaking them down into a black and white uh, scheme so I could see the value system, or the, the lights and darks, uh, clear without the chromatic system uh, and it also made it a little easier for me to interpret the um, the compositional aspect of the, of the painting although there you know there there are many ways it's a very complex painting so there are many ways to uh, show the compositional and sight lines and everything I mean, somebody else could come up with a completely different pattern. But this is, I tried different ways with it, and uh, this was the one that really satisfied me. And then from, directly from that, um, I started to work with, with the materials that I work with, 
uh, in the studio, the metal and the burnishing of, of the metal with color. However, when I saw the real Caravaggio, I was stunned. It's an amazing painting. And so it, it had a lot of impact on me, you know, both emotionally and aesthetically. I'm intrigued with uh, Naples in the fact that there's a, a, a kind of a light dance that goes on in, in this city. Um, it's most evident in the way the traffic patterns. You know, I don't know why all the cars aren't in gigantic accidents around here. But um, I also am intrigued about the integration of the light side of, of Naples and the uh, cultural side of Naples uh, and, the, and the dark side of Naples, you know, and the poverty of Naples. Where, these, where you, you're going down a narrow street and um, you feel like you, you're possibly in a, um, a, a dark district, you know, or a slum or something like that. And uh, everything is old, and all of a sudden, you just pop into this church, and here's like a masterpiece. You know? The people are both connected with the their history. Um, they, I think that they they. You can see the history in their faces, I mean, and and in, and in uh, their origins. Uh, but at the same time, they are very contemporary. You know, there seems to be this interesting balance between history. They're not like locked in their history. They're not bound to their history. Um, they seem to be contemporary people and interested in contemporary art, contemporary music. So it, it's actually a genuinely cultural environment.